Welcome to another video. So in this video we're going to be replacing the power steering pump on a Dodge Cummings. Now this is the pump I got and just a little bit of update information. I got it from uh, Borgerson. Now I've never put one of these pumps on but I'm going to give it a try. This truck has 580,000 miles on it so I've worked on this stuff before and if you're a Dodge owner I mean I like the Dodge I you know I've had really good luck with it but it one of the leak points is the steering so I've put the Borgeson steering box on and I've upgraded the front end I got the support piece and so on like that now, I've had this truck, I got this truck, I had about 70,000 miles on it, so I've had it for a long time. And they claim what part of the problem is, is the trucks are so heavy, when you have the steering box bolted to the frame, and you turn the steering, well, it cocks the frame around, and that binds the steering box and wears them out. So I had problems with this and I tried one of their steering boxes and they cost a little bit more but I can tell you I've had it on there for over 300,000 miles and it's still good. And it's got a little bit shorter turning ratio which kind of makes it nice if you got to park and stuff like that. I drive it around the city a lot and it makes it easier for steering. Now this power steering pump is supposed to be a higher output which in turn will should give you an easier stopping and easier turning because it also feeds your hydraulic booster brake booster so at any rate you know if you're interested you can take a look I've got how to rebuild this whole front end on this truck and I got tons of upgrades for this truck and repairs so be sure to subscribe and take a look at that other stuff. At any rate, the pump is about the same price as any other pump. The steering box is a little bit pricey, but you can take a look and see how to rebuild, upgrade your power or your steering. And I have a video on that if you're interested. So let's get to it and see what we got to do. So I should have added the reason I'm replacing this pump is it's leaking and if your pump has been leaking well you know you got an oily mess down there more than likely so you may want to pressure wash it or something first because it can get pretty nasty but just take a look at this new one in the back. You have a supply line and then you have two return lines. Now two return lines have clamps on them. So if we look down in here and you got to kind of reach down in there to look at it. Um, you can see the two return lines in the back and the supply line is kind of underneath. So I want to take them loose first. Now you want to put a pan down there of course because fluid's all going to come out. So the first thing we got to do is remove them. Now you may have more or less room in here depending on modifications and all you've done. There's a oil filter and pump that hang back here and I got an aftermarket one on there and you can see I got a tuner and stuff like that on there that's what all those wires are uh, but at any rate we want to take the lines loose first so we're going to do that and like I say stick a pan under it drain all of it let it drain out and then we'll move on to the next thing okay so once you got the lines loose then there's going to be four studs and there'll be studs with nuts on them so as you can see there's two right there and there's one in the back and there's one on the bottom so some of these are easier to get from the top and some of these are easier to get from the bottom you just got to kind of see what works best for you so we're going to take those nuts loose and then the whole thing should slide straight back and you'll be able to lower it down. And we're going to do that next and then we'll move on to the next step. 
Okay, so the next thing you have to do is you have to get the studs out of the old one. So what they look like, they're just threaded on both ends and the one end goes in as so. So what you do is you take two of the nuts and you back them up against each other and then take two wrenches and tighten them together real good. Then you'll be able to take the top on it and turn it and it'll get it out. You can also put them back in that way if they don't bottom all the way out by hand. If they bottom all the way out by hand, they're fine. But yeah, you just leave the nuts on there, screw it in the new one, and then break the nuts loose. Uh, what I got here too, I'm gonna show you. I got something off the truck so it's easier to see. As you can see, this is uh, how it drives the pump. Now it drives through the vacuum pump. So this is actually an old vacuum pump that I got. And this goes into your, bolts into your main crank gears where all your gears are for your cam and your crankshaft and what have you like that. And that's what drives it. And you can see this end has the slot on it. So this piece here has a T in it. Okay, and that T moves around freely. So this is a very important part that you get this lined up. And it's very difficult to see. You can try a mirror or you can try, you know, just move a little bit, see if it fits, move a little bit, see if it fits. But it's got to be lined up right. You'll know because it'll push up tight on your fitting. So the other thing I like to bring up too is now's a good time, if you look at these, it's got a seal right here okay and these commonly seal uh, commonly leak it's on a vacuum pump now this one is broke up top the flange is broke and actually this side um, you can see I put it cracked I don't know why but here you, know, you can see the crack going through it <clears throat> anyway this is very common to get oil leaks so it's a good time to check it or if you're going this far you can just take the old one off and rebuild it the one i got on there now has not been on there too long so i'm not going to worry about it but i have a video on how to rebuild these they're very simple to rebuild you know um i have a link in the video to want to rebuild it where you buy the parts it's like 70 dollars. a new one you know is over 100 100 something aftermarket but they're very simple to, re to rebuild. You just basically put a new seal in here. But you kind of got to take it apart from the other way. At any rate, if you're interested, you know, go ahead and rebuild it while you're this far. There's only two bolts holding it on. It's very simple to take off. That's the easiest part to take apart. Um, but like I say, you know, just uh, take subscribe, take a look at the... <clears throat> videos we got and it'll tell you exactly how to rebuild it so we're going to get the studs out and then we're going to wiggle it back down in place and like i say we're you know you've got to play with it a couple times to get that lined up with your crosshairs in there or if you got a mirror you know what have you like that so we're going to do that next and then we're going to move on to see what's left so we got our pump back in there but just some things, if you really have a difficult time getting those crosshairs lined up, sometimes they can be a pain in the butt. What I've done before is you bolt the nuts on finger tight and then turn the engine over a couple times without starting it. And usually it'll fall into place. And like I say, you know, you know because it'll push up pretty close to tight. And you don't want to force it or you'll break it because it's just aluminum. <clears throat> so at any rate, you know, that's how you do it. The other thing is, too, you have to have the steering. I didn't say this in the beginning, but you have to have the steering turned all the way to get it out the bottom. Uh, you could also get it out the top, depending on what you have here. If you have a stock truck, it's got a fuel pump bolted on there. It might be in the way, but you can do that. Then all there is is, you know, you hook up your, your two return lines, your supply line. You fill it full of fluid, and then you want to jack the front tires off the ground. 
and turn it back and forth a couple times. Now, the, the pumps are all self-priming. In other words, they just sit in the reservoir and it pumps the fluid out. There's no bleeding it. But you need to turn the wheels back and forth to you know get the air out the first time and then recheck the fluid and make sure it's full so I hope this helps you out you know you can see what I was talking about upgrades I got my water methanol there I made my own intake plenum got compound turbos external wastegate I got a lot of different upgrades a lot of things that could interest you on these vehicles if you so inclined so be sure to subscribe take a look uh, we have everything from transmission rebuilds to brakes to you name it we got it on here so thank you for watching I hope you have a pleasant day and I hope this helps you out we'll see you in the next video